Good evening and thank you for attending our Tri-Region's second annual State of the Region Address. I'm Dave Grobman, I'm Chair of the Spruce Grove and District Chamber of Commerce. I welcome you with open arms. Um, I would like to point out that we have a social media presence here. Uh, so if you're planning on using Facebook, Instagram, Twitter to talk about your evening, uh, kindly use the hashtag, uh, pound, or hashtag State of the Region. That would be a good thing. Uh, in addition, we'll be randomly donating a basic membership to both chambers, including the enhanced marketing package, to one lucky winner who used the hashtag. And the entries will be tallied by Panda Rose. We've got Jen here and a random number generator. No fake news here. Random generator will be used to decide who wins. Uh, if I could just take a moment to get every single one of the women in the building to stand up in appreciation of International Women's Day. Thank you, ladies. I personally am blessed to have uh, a good number of very strong women in my life. Uh, that is very much a, a mixed blessing sometimes, but for the most part has been a wonderful thing. And I think I am not alone when I suggest that you should be celebrated each and every day, not just one day a year. I wanted to uh, take a moment to talk about uh, our ultimate unification of our chambers. There's a reason that we're doing this uh, as a joint uh, uh, a joint effort uh, but at the end of the exercise this evening is more about our municipalities than about our chambers uh, but I would like to point out that uh, our unification committee which we call TRAC is uh, moving full steam ahead and has been exceedingly productive lately uh, and that is the Stony Plain and the Spruce uh, Grove uh, Chambers of Commerce that are sitting at the table as well as Lois and Frank from Wabaman who are being very helpful in putting this effort together to make uh, one large combined voice for the entire region. I would also like to take a moment to recognize uh, Alberta Business Awards of Distinction finalists. We have a couple that uh, were celebrated last Friday at the Renaissance Hotel in Edmonton. Uh, we have uh, Spru Spruce Park Ranch Country Store. They were uh, a finalist for Marketing Award of Distinction. I don't know if they're here tonight to represent, but I think they deserve a round of applause for making it. And I'd like to congratulate Solari Distributors and uh, Rick Kaminsky for Indigenous Award of Distinction. It, it took Rick a long time to find that unicorn pelt, but I'm glad that he was able to, there's not too many people I know that can pull that off. So with that, I will turn the floor over to, oh, no, you're, you're right there. No, you want me to continue? Yes. I'm going to continue. Yes. Okay. They so you better than me anyways. Before we begin our program this evening, we wish to honor our neighbors in Enoch Cree Nation and Paul First Nation, we wish to acknowledge that the land we're on uh, was used to gather uh, for in Treaty 6 territory and a traditional meeting ground and home for many indigenous peoples, including the Cree, the Dene, the Blackfoot, the Métis, and the Nakoda Sioux. We are uh, very thankful tonight to have Elder Shirley Shirt from the Enoch Cree Nation here, and she will be blessing our meal in Cree, which is something I personally am looking forward to. So thank you very much, Elder, for showing up and helping to support our gathering. Thank you very much, Dave. So, I'm Kevin White. I'm the president of the Stony Plain and District Chamber of Commerce. And I would also like to uh, express welcome from the Stony Plain and District Chamber for everyone being here today. It's uh, my privilege to co-host the evening with Dave. And one thing I'm looking for, I, I gotta be honest, I'm looking for a little bit of redemption from last year. Um, so those of you who were here at our first um, inaugural uh, State of the Region Address, uh, where uh, Rick and I um, uh, co-hosted the, the event in the evening, we had a, a bit of a go or a bit of a time uh, doing all of the dignitary introductions, um, which I'm sure that everybody can remember. So um, we've changed things up a little bit this year. Um, and rather than, uh, because let's be honest, everybody in the room is extremely important and uh, deserves some recognition. Um, but so we're just going to, I'm just going to express the various organizations that are represented here tonight. Because um, when you look at the list or you hear the list, it's quite the, um, quite the impressive feat. There's, we're quite 
honored and, and blessed to have uh, so many people from so many um, important community organizations here with us today. So we have representation uh, tonight from Enoch Cree Nation, from the province of Alberta, the city of Beaumont, the town of Gibbons, the town of Devon, the city of St. Albert, the village of Wabaman, Leduc County, Parkland County, the town of Stony Plain, the city of Spruce Grove, the St. Albert and District Chamber of Commerce, the Wabaman and District Chamber of Commerce, the Edmonton Chamber of Commerce, the Atchison Business Association, the Stony Plain Chamber of Commerce, the Spruce Grove and District Chamber of Commerce, the Spruce Grove and District Agricultural Society, Parkland School Division number 70, Evergreen Catholic School Division, Parkland Food Bank Society, Alberta Parenting for the Future, and the Edmonton International Airport. And I'm sure that I've missed some, and for those of you that I've missed, I apologize, but if we could just give a big round of a hand for everyone that's here tonight, that'd be great. And I do, we do need to acknowledge that tonight would not be possible with the help of our generous sponsors, um, and so I want to pay a special recognition to them now. So our sponsors for tonight include Thompson Construction Group, Transalta, Beaverbrook Pioneer Limited, Brokerlink, Panda Rose Consulting, Decker Properties Group Inc., Sorrentino's, Solari Distributors, Victor Moro's Royal, Royal Page Noralta, Avail, um, Avela Developments, Parkland County, the City of Spruce Grove, and the Town of Stony Plain. So thank you very much to our sponsors. And it's at this time that I'd like to call up um, MLA Erin Babcock, who's here with us this evening, and she will bring greetings on behalf of the province of Alberta. That happens every time. So thank you so much for having me this evening. I am honored to be here and uh, I'd like to thank the tri-municipal mayors and their councils and the uh, chambers of commerce for having me here this evening. I'd respectfully acknowledge that we're gathered on the traditional territory of Treaty 6 First Nation and I'd like to recognize the Métis people as well who share a deep connection and history with this land. And wow, everyone. Look at what the Tri-Region has accomplished in the past few years, working collaboratively. My success as an elected official is only as strong as the people who stand behind me. And in this case, Stony Plain, Spruce Grove, and Parkland County. It's with your passion and your commitment to your residents that makes my job of advocating on your behalf such a pleasure. When I speak of my constituency to the Premier, I'm full of pride of how hard you have all worked towards a common goal of improving life for the region and for Albertans. Let's look at some of our accomplishments. Highway 779 and 628, there's no words. Mayor Choi and his council lobbied almost every day. And every day I knocked on the Minister of Transportation's door on my way to the legislature. And finally, Mayor Choi, you finally have your lights. Parkland County, Mayor Shagas and the Atchison Business Association, they lobbied fast and hard for the overpass and the realignment of 628. And with the acknowledgement of the Premier, who I thank from the bottom of my heart, we have achieved that as well, and I can finally file those letters under completion. They also lobbied very hard for the overpass at Highway 60. I remember some billboards being brought out to Minister Sisi. Spruce Grove, Mayor Houston, and council received two new schools. And we threw a rebuild of Stony Plain Central in because we were reviewing the needs of our communities. We also saw a historic occasion this past year when Spruce Grove, Stony Plain, and Parkland County signed the agreement to move strategically into the future with one voice. For all of the businesses here tonight, you couldn't have picked a better community to showcase your business. You have the weight of the tri-municipal region behind you, being there to help you secure a successful future and that united front will only strengthen all businesses and residents. Every person in this room has been an advocate to me and to my government and to further the, the 
needs and the wants of our communities. So thank you so much for the work that you all do. Thank you all and enjoy your evening. But at this time, I'd like to call up um, our first mayor to present uh, to us the reason we're all here, a man who needs no introduction, Mayor Stuart Houston, Mayor of uh, City, or, uh, City of Spruce Grove, Mayor Stuart Houston. I'm sorry, Stu. Yeah. You know, the reason the mayor needs no introduction is because his picture is everywhere. And I was actually almost stalking Mayor Choi's uh, website, and it's amazing how many pictures that our illustrious mayor shows up in on his website. I'm just trying to keep up to Rick Kaminsky. <laughs> anyway, um, I just wanted to say, uh, first of all, uh, Elder Shirley, uh, MLA Babcock, ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, and all the elected officials and everybody's here. It's a real honor for me to be here representing the city and citizens of Spruce Grove. Extremely proud to be the mayor of that city and we have a lot of things to be proud of and a lot of things that we're working toward to achieve to make our community uh, what it is and, and there's lots of work to do. Before I do that, I would just like to say thank you to all of you for coming and I'd like you to look at the person on your left, shake their hand and say thank you very much for coming. Could you do that right now for me? Okay, thank you very much. I'd, that gives everybody a little bit of a uh, little bit of breath of fresh air. But anyway, I want to say thank you very much for coming. I'm excited to be here. There's so much going on in our region with the potential unification of the Chambers of Commerce. Incredible discussions going on with the regional partners, Stony Plain and Parkland County, and the good work that we're doing together. And I'm incredibly excited this uh, term to be working with a very dynamic council that. Uh, has got a lot of work ahead of us that we're gonna to move toward uh, a new vision and an incredible vision for Spruce Grove. So um, rather than us stand up here and talk for 20 minutes, we thought we'd just prepare a video to talk a little bit about our community. There's a nine minute video and I am pretty sure a lot of you will consider moving to Spruce Grove after you see this video. <laughs> but anyway, enjoy. I'd like to thank Mayor Houston for uh uh, the ability to rib him, when I, when I made a comment on his picture being everywhere, that's because this man is an extremely passionate and vocal advocate for our community. And he shows up everywhere he's needed to help support the community. So if I could have a round of applause for Mayor Stuart Houston, I'd appreciate it. Now, it should be noted that he is so passionate about bringing more residential and, and, uh, and families to Spruce Grove that it's my understanding he's volunteered to personally help unload the moving trucks when they back up into new driveways. I understand Stuart's been working out, so it's time to test that theory. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm the guy, I'm the face of Staples in town, and I've got three kids at home, and, you know, there was, there was, we walked through Prescott, we walked through Copperhaven, and I just want to take my hat off, so to speak, to uh, our friends with PSD 70 who do a remarkable job in helping to support our kids in the educational system. Uh, now, we've got a little bit of a change of format here because I was actually supposed to introduce the next mayor, uh, William Choi, but uh, it seems to me that with the spirit of regionalization and with the amount of time that these three mayors have been working together, it behooves me to bring Mayor Houston back up so that he can introduce his counterpart in Stony Plain. As I was walking up, somebody said to me, be kind. <laughs> of course. Um, I'm going to ask him to be, do the same, <laughs> to be kind. But anyway, I just wanted to uh, take the opportunity, and, and thank you very much for this idea, but I want to take the opportunity to introduce a very special colleague and friend of mine and uh, a, a strong friend of the region. I don't know many people that have as much passion for their own communities as Mayor Choi has for the town of Stony Plain, recognizing um, the work that he is uh, looking to do with his council and, and coming forward with a, a number of very strategic and new initiatives for Stony Plain. And I just want to say that he is continually talking about regional cooperation and about regionalism and about working together. He's a strong advocate and a very passionate leader in the region. And it's my pleasure to introduce Mayor William Choi from the town of Stony Plain. Hey, 
Okay, so good evening and uh, welcome. Thank you for taking the time to be here with us today. It means a great deal that you've uh, chosen to spend the evening with uh, Rod and Stuart, but not together. They're actually separate people. We have Rod and Stuart. <laughs> so you won't be seeing any singing, but, but as Mary Houston has mentioned, this is a great event because it showcases that three municipalities can work together. We have a city, a county, and a town that can put aside their differences and focus on the big picture, what's best for our residents. Right? Knowing the fact that residents do, do no longer see voters anymore goes a long way to providing those amenities and services that all residents need and want. That is why it's a great pleasure to work with Rod and Stewart because they have that same vision as well. We realize it doesn't matter if it's located in your, in your municipality or mine. We're doing this because it benefits us all. And with that attitude, we're able to accomplish more, achieve more, and go further than if we did it by ourselves. 2008 has been a great year for us, Town Swain Plain, as well as the Tri-Region. Tri and that is only possible because of the partnerships that we have and the volunteers we have in the communities and people like you guys supporting us. So let's take a moment, moment and give everyone a hand. <laughs> this year I was asked to do a video. So I'm not too good at videos. Stuart is the master of that. So I've been taking lessons. Hopefully that uh, you can see some of that rub off on me. So if you can roll the film, please. You know, in Stony Plains video, uh, Mark Dressler, Pastor Mark Dressler from SML Christian Academy was up there. He's the principal over there. And it occurs to me that when I went out of my way to thank PSD 70 for their contributions to our kids, I neglected to mention Evergreen Catholic School Board and uh, Pastor Dressler for all the good work that they do. I'd also like to take a moment to thank Mayor Houston for uh, allowing me to throw him under the bus with Mayor Choi. Uh, William, you've had the opportunity to think about what your announcement is going to look like, so if you wouldn't mind coming up here and introducing your counterpart for Parkland County. Thank you, Dave. And I was also told to be nice. So, I've known uh, Mayor Shagas for how many years now, Rod? About eight and a half years now. And from the first day I met him, I can say, he's a guy that I can look up to. And still to this day, I, I still look up to him. So, he, he must be doing something, something right in my books. But as you can see in our video, we do a lot of focus on community. Um, none of that happens without everybody coming to the table. And since uh, Rod's been the mayor of Parkland County, he has been at the table. He has fought hard with his members of council to make sure that there is funding that goes into uh, Stony Plain and, Park and Spruce Grove because he realizes that we are one community together. You know, Rod uh, does great work on EMRB and Emden Global as well because he has that vision vision of the entire community. And that is uh, why it is an honor to uh, call him a colleague and a friend. Rod? Sorry, William, I thought I had that $20 in my pockets. I'll get it to you later for that very uh, fine introduction. Uh, well, it's a pleasure to be here and it's great to be here with all of you alongside with Mayor Houston and Mayor Choi. And this event provides us an opportunity to step back and reflect on the past year and Undeniably, 28 had, uh, 2018 had some challenges, but uh, more so there was a lot of excitement about the incredible amount of growth that we witnessed in the region. And uh, we're continuing to grow. We're growing our communities, we're growing the economy, and we're growing this region. And with that, I invite you to watch the video uh, that we've made for the, the occasion here this evening. Thank you. Three very different personalities, but uh, collectively very, very powerful voices for an engaged community. And we're all blessed to have these men at the helm. Thank you very much.
Paul Mares. We move now into our Q&A session and we're more or less on time. This is moderated by Evan Cook, News Director for Black Gold Broadcasting at 88.1 The One and play-by-play -play announcer for our Spruce Grove Saints broadcasts. Though Evan grew up in Toronto and completed his schooling there, uh, he was wise enough to make his way out west after graduating and if you can't find this chap in council chambers or at the hockey rink or the golf course, you're just not looking hard enough because he's there. Uh, Evan, I should, I, I should acknowledge as well that I had the privilege of a grand opening for uh, the property chicks. Uh, Shannon, I don't know if you're here, but I thank you for the luxurious accommodations we have up on stage. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you for the introduction. I was told the Toronto piece would stay out, but um, here we are. Uh, thank you to the Chambers for allowing me to be here tonight. Uh, I'm a relative newcomer to the community, so it's nice to be here and see everybody and uh, have the chance to have three uh, heavyweights up on stage here tonight for the Q&A. So if you've been at, at this event in years past, I understand it's going to work pretty well the same way. Uh, I've prepared uh, with inputs from both chambers as well, uh, some questions to uh, ask our mayors. Uh, it's not uh, going to be maybe as formal as some of the election uh, campaigns and, uh, and events that we'll have over the course of the year, but uh, we'll get the opportunity for them to come up and talk about uh, some of the things that I think a lot of you are talking about in the region. Um, so I guess with that, I'll invite the three mayors to join me up here on stage. So a theme that we've touched on a couple times tonight so far is that the Chambers of Commerce in the region are working on unification. And if and when Spruce Grove and Stony Plain unify in the first phase, they become one of the largest chambers in the province. Are you in support of this proposed unification and what value will it bring to the region. Mayor Choi, you've got the mic, so I'll let you kick it off. Thank you, Evan. And yes, I am in favor of unification of the chambers. Um, I've threatened many times that I would annex uh, Wadman because I want beachfront. So I'm glad to see that they're included in the conversations as well. I think having a unified voice um, gives the business owners and business um, people out here have uh, a stronger say. Being amalgamated makes them the third largest chamber in Alberta. Just think about that. So in Plains, Spruce Grove, and Parkland County will be the third largest chamber in Alberta. And irrefutably, Parkland County supports unification as well. And in fact, Parkland County uh, initiated the inaugural meeting amongst the two chambers, as well as the Atchison Business Association, the town of Stony Plain, and, and the city of Spruce Grove about 18 months ago. Um, and part of that was precipitated on the fact that uh, with the creation of Edmonton Global, which was uh, uh, referenced earlier, there's going to be tremendous opportunity for this region to capitalize on some of those opportunities that Edmonton Global is going to be uh, embarked on and, and tasked with, uh, which is uh, attracting new businesses to the region and attracting foreign direct investment. So to have a stronger unified voice will position us better and allow us as a uh, the tri-municipality to get our fair share of that investment into the region. Thanks. Yeah, the city of Spruce Grove is, feels the same. Uh, we're excited about the possibilities of a unification between the chambers. I think uh, you know we're certainly in support of whatever the chambers uh, can work together to achieve, and it just brings us all together in one strong voice. I mean, look at this group tonight, and look at the times when we've had those uh, unified chamber. Uh, you know, galas and stuff like that. I think it's fantastic. And it's all about driving economic development. And if we can do better to work together on that, it's a, it's a fantastic opportunity. Well, kind of on that theme, I wanted to talk about amalgamation in a different sense uh, with the push for municipal consolidation. And it's often driven by the same imperatives, a quest for more appropriate political representation, uh, a desire for cost efficiency in local government, or a belief that a reduction in the number of governments is best for the effective delivery of services. Do you feel that the tri-region would benefit from one municipality, 
and what benefits are most likely to be gained from a merger and at what cost? Could you just repeat that question? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say um, the city of Spruce Grove, Parkland County and Stony Plain have done some incredible strides um, over the last year. I can't tell you how much uh, the leadership from uh, Mayor Shagas, Mayor Choi, and uh, us work, all working together have made a significant uh, difference in the way we are talking about working together. I think you saw in uh, Mayor Shagas's uh, slide presentation or show that was a uh, memorandum of understanding to work together. So what we're doing is looking at working together in a strong collaborative fashion that brings together economic development, social sustainability, and land use planning that reflect the best and most efficient use of, of the prime ag lands that we're sitting on. We're working together. Uh, we're looked at, as Mayor Choi has always talked about, a region without borders. We believe that. And I think that what we're going to do going forward is work on uh, continuing to work on the collaborative effort of delivering the services that all our residents uh, need and, and appreciate. Uh, sometimes when you talk about uh, regional collaboration and growth, um, it doesn't always uh, sometimes reduce costs at the same token. There's a lot of opportunities for us going forward, and we're going to continue to be a strong advocate for that. Ditto. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> no, you know, the, the tri-region has had a long and uh, storied success of collaboration, and it's been very well demonstrated. Uh, I believe there's greater opportunities to find uh, uh, better alignment and synergies, uh, to find more efficiencies, and, and to deliver uh, services to the residents and the business communities. Uh, but Parkland County is a little bit unique uh, from Stony Plain and Spruce Grove because we are such a vast geographical rural municipality. We're almost 600,000 acres. Uh, we have a number of uh, urban municipalities within our borders. The service levels and the demands uh, are different from uh, across Parkland County. Um, so we're uh, still looking for, you know, opportunities with all of our regional partners. And it's not just Stony Plain and Spruce Grove. Parkland County, in fact, has uh, agreements and par has partnered with 13 municipalities um, to provide service deliveries uh, for our residents and to recognize cost savings. Um, over time, well, we might see a natural evolution where we do become one uh, specialized municipality, but at this point, I think uh, the interests of the residents and, and the business community are well served. And my fellow mayors have well said the, uh, the comments. I think as we strive in the next few years, we need to get our houses in order about how we can um, provide synergies to our residents not just as an amalgamation, but in, time, in terms of finance, in terms of how we plan for recreation, in terms of how we fund for a lot of things. We can save a lot of money, a lot of synergies there. Let's start with there first, because there is, uh, like I said earlier, there's three unique styles or communities here. Parkland County, which is wide and vast and has a lot of different needs. Uh, Spruce Grove, again, a larger center that has also different needs than the town of Swain Plain, even though we're an urban center. So, the three of us can work together as one and show the benefits to our residents without being one municipality. I think there's a lot of examples of that that we can continue to, uh, to model and, and strive for that. And if one day that does happen, um, that'd be a natural progression that I would actually support as well because I think there is synergies there. There's also some negatives, but we have to weigh that out when the time comes. For the time being, we're going to continue to work together and strive forward to push the Tri-County as one. We're one region, we're one voice, and uh, we will do things together and united because we can do more together. Yeah, with the topic of amalgamation, <laughs> logistically with one municipality, you'd also have one council table to sit around too. Do you see that as more of a positive or a potential negative given the differences between the three municipalities that you've highlighted? Um, I think there's some positives and negatives for that. Um, you can definitely see when we come and sit in Parkland County Council, as Rod has mentioned a couple times, it is such a vast county that there's so many competing entrances everywhere. It's hard to, to, to pinpoint and just put the money. Like the money is limited. And if we all amalgamate, uh, we're just looking at a dense urban population within 
the eastern side of Parkland County. Well, will all those funds come to the eastern side and will the western part of Parkland County be left out? Like, those are things that we have to weigh out. Um, so there's a lot of issues that have to be um, discussed and, de de and determined before we actually uh, take the next step. From uh, Parkland County's perspective, again, being a rural municipality, uh, there would be some concerns on behalf of our residents, particularly those in the western part of Parkland County. Um, with all levels of government, I, th I think you see uh, a lot of investment and pandering to those areas that are more densely populated. Um, I think there'd be concerns from the residents uh, in the west and southwest of Parkland County that may, they may be neglected, may not be recognizing the same type of service levels or investments into the communities. Um, so at this point, uh, you know, that would be from a, from a governance perspective the biggest concern. And there are cases uh, even within the region where, um, well, we only have one specialized municipality. Is there any elected official here from Strathcona? Great. <laughs> but there, ha there have been residents in Strathcona County and that live in the rural areas that have voiced their concerns publicly regarding service levels and, and feeling that they've been overlooked or neglected as far as uh, investments into their particular part of the municipality. I, I might share a little bit of a different approach and perspective and, and when Rod talked about Strathcona County, um, part of the uh, concern with amalgamation is a loss of autonomy, loss of uh, visibility of your community. I can tell you this, is that a one connected powerful Parkland County would be probably nine elected officials representing a diverse area of the, of the county, of, of this region, to make it a specialized municipality. And I think there's, there's some merit to that in, in that uh, you're under one governance, you, you do look at land use planning, you look at economic development under with one lens, and I, and I think to, to some extent there, there's some possibilities for that. I would say that we're moving in that direction, and I would say that this, the uh, hamlet of Sherwood Park has never lost its identity. Our Drossen is our Drossen. Spruce Grove will always be Spruce Grove, and Stony Plain will always be Stony Plain. So I think if we look to the future, and it may be in the next council term or in the next little while, that we, we look at a specialized municipality and put all of our capital planning under one umbrella with maybe five uh, elected officials from throughout the region. So that's just a little another perspective. Thank you. We can move on here to recreation. And currently the city of Spruce Grove is discussing plans for a potential sports and entertainment center. Now uh, the town of Stony Plain is exploring a recreation facility. When it comes to potential facilities like these, how can we collaborate to build regional projects that complement and not compete with each other? That's perfect that I have this happen, happen to have the mic in my hand. I, I think uh, I, I, it's, it's no uh, secret the city of Spruce Grove has been working on uh, a project for, uh, I guess, say about five years. And uh, that complements our a very large uh, project where we undertook in 2009 and 2017 for an indoor regional uh, recreation study plan within the region. And uh, the elements of that plan um, are identified in both Spruce Grove's project and Stony Plain's project. And I think going forward with uh, Stony Plain coming forward with their project, we're going to look at not duplicating those projects and looking at how we can bring some of those projects forward uh, in a regional manner that, uh, that build on the, on the region. I think the Transalta Tri-Leisure Centre is an example of what we can do when we work together. And we're going to be looking forward to having that conversation. I know our council, uh, we're, we're fairly long along the process with ours and we're, we're going out into the public consultation part and Stony Plain is doing the same. But I think working together, uh, building on recreation needs, that's what really attracts people, attracts young families into our region. It drives people to our community, that drives business, that drives more business. So it's, it's good for everybody if we work together. And I'm pretty confident that we'll do that. Well, uh, we certainly have seen significant growth in the tri-municipal region and largely in the city of Spruce Grove um, and uh, the town of Stony Plain. Um, and again, we've uh, had significant history 
uh, planning and working together on recreational facilities, and there's significant demands throughout the region. But uh, you know, in order to be successful, we need to ensure that we have effective ongoing communication between all the partners, and not just the municipal partners, because there are the other stakeholders that need to be involved. We also need to recognize the obligations, both, both current and future obligations of the respective municipalities. And we also uh, need to identify what the individual priorities are for the municipalities and the collective priorities. And probably foremost is we need to ensure that we take, go through a process of due diligence to uh, identify uh, whether we are able to afford um, not just recreational facilities, because there's other demands from our residents and the business communities, and all, all municipalities do have uh, a financial reality that they deal, deal with. So um, it's going to take continued effort um, and good faith on the part of the three municipalities and other stakeholders uh, to see the demands uh, that we're, we're being faced with in the region. Back in 2008, uh the three of us did an indoor recreational facility study. And thanks to the leadership of Parkland County, um, which spearheaded the, in, the updated indoor recreational facility in 2017, we consulted uh, a lot of our residents from the tri-municipal area to see what facilities and what services are we missing in terms of recreation. And uh, with the recreational plan that has been put forward as a con conceptual design is based out of that plan. So thank you very much, Parkland County, for uh, for taking those, that time into leading that uh, updated study. In terms of recreational facilities in the community, those are the things that drive people to our communities, that drive businesses to our communities. If you don't have something to offer the residents, they don't come. You know, Mayor Stuart Houston is a, is a great uh, promoter of Spruce Grove, but not everybody wants to live in Spruce Grove. Just kidding. <laughs> you know, and People enjoy the, 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 the quaintness and, and the, the quiet town and quiet atmosphere of Parkland County. But again, county living is not for everybody as well. And just like Town Stone Plain, it's not a fit for everybody. Right? So, but we do realize that if we do our studies together and to see what is required from our residents and we stick to those plans and we build accordingly, then we can make those realities happen. We can make those amenities happen. We can meet all the requirements of our residents by working together. And I think that's what uh, the three of us have done time and time again, is looking at what our residents want and how to best serve them. So it, it will not be competing interests. It will be collaborative and complementary to each other. Of course, a follow-up for a lot of people is how do we pay for buildings like these and what do you see when it comes to a provincial commitment that's likely going to be required? Do you think that there is federal money that could possibly come in? What do you see as possibilities and needs for that? Yes, yeah, so um, the Town of Plains already applied for a couple of recreational grants. So hopefully those come through. Um, this facility and every facility that we have on our books, uh, probably similar to Parkland County and City Spruce Grove, is it doesn't happen without partnerships and collaboration from everybody. So that would be the user groups that use the facilities. That would be the other municipalities that are around us. That would be corporate sponsors. We need you at the table. And definitely, um, Emily Babcock is not here, but we do need the uh, provincial government and federal government to step up as well. Right? We're all you know, residents of our country, and we need to provide those things for our residents. Moving on to emergency services and high density residential fires. The 10 minute response time is something that developers have to take into consideration when planning to build in a community due to added costs. So with this in mind, could we see a collaboration of all of our emergency services going forward? Well, I'll speak briefly on uh, fire services in Parkland County. Again, as a rural municipality, um, we don't have the density developments that urban centers do, and nor are we allowed to have those density, um, uh, that high level of density development uh, because of the constraints with the Edmonton Metropolitan Region Growth Plan. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, there's, there's uh, certainly opportunities to look at uh, 
partnerships. Um, Park, Parkland County does have uh, uh, fire service agreements with all of our municipal partners. Uh, uh, as a rural municipality, we rely largely on volunteer firefighters. Uh, our response time subsequently is, is, is slower than urban centers that have paid, uh, paid um, fire services personnel. Um, and we rely on our partners uh, to deliver a lot of that service as well. Yes, thank you, Rod. And um, the city of Spruce Grove, uh, over the uh, last number of years, have uh, put a large uh, amount of resources and dedication into our fire services. And I think you recognize the facility that we did. Um, our fire department uh, achieves a national standard, uh, even which is even higher than the Alberta Building Code standard for fire response times. And so we are, we're fortunate uh, with the geographical location of our fire department within our city we're able to be anywhere uh, within our city in six minutes. So uh, that's, uh, that's a big plus for uh, the home insurance industry and everything else in our community. But uh, I think uh, with that, there's a, there's, a, there's a significant cost to providing that level of service. And we also have a mutual aid, aid agreement with the town of Stony Plain. And I know that uh, the mayor of St. Albert will remember a major fire that they had that our fire truck, our ladder trucks responded to, and, and we also have mutual aid with Parkland County. So I think that's part of a, a good conversation, and, and how that's achieved is, uh, is a lot of uh, collaborative work, but um, I think the more question is uh, relates to the uh, uh, Stony Plain and Parkland, uh, their uh, fire services, but we're on track to work working together with them. Yeah, so, uh, in terms of fire, regionally we do work w really well together, as uh, the mayor has mentioned. We have mutual aid through all the uh, three departments, as well as Stony Plain provides uh, fire service to Division 3 in Parkland County as well, which is just west of town. So currently our, our response rate is not quite at the 10 minute response time. And there are some, you know, things that you have to do as a developer in the town of Stony Plain. Uh, one is to adjust your, your your pocket so you're a little bit further away from the property lines or you don't put any side windows on your house or you sprinkle your house so those are the options there's other materials that we can to get that that 10 minute separation or a little bit longer but that's all added added cost okay. so when the town swimming plane looks at the fact do we want to go to a full full-time fire uh, service versus right now we have a kind of a, a balance. We have about seven full-time employees that cover the daytime and then we have volunteers that cover the evening. At that, we're pretty close to the 10-minute response time, but not quite 100% there. So we're not comfortable of saying, yes, we'll make it. But if we did go to a full-time, it will cost us roughly $4 million to our budget. So currently we have a million dollars that we have budgeted for fire services. If it went full time, it'll be $4 million, which is about an 18 to 20% increase in our tax rate. And from the residents that I've talked to, nobody wants an 18 to 20% tax increase. Right? The fire service that we provide with our dual system is second to none, and it does respond very, very well. As mentioned on, the, on our video, uh, they provided mutual aid to both Spruce Grove, Parkland County, and we also sent, uh, people up to um, high level, well, down to high level, and up to uh, Fort Mac when those emergencies were there. And we were still able to provide service to the residents. So again, it's uh, kind of here and there, but currently at this point in time, I have not yet heard a big demand from our uh, residents to increase our taxes so that we can meet that 10 minute response time. But uh, collaboration is always on the table. Our next topic, a popular one, is photo radar. <laughs> and the provincial government recently had this in the news because the province has unveiled some new measures when it comes to photo radar as they're trying to make it fair for drivers and promote accountability from the municipalities who use it in terms of the information that's reported back to the public on how uh, the service is used. What do you think we need to change, if anything, when it comes to photo radar and how it's used in the tri-region? So, uh, Stony Plain does have uh, photo radar. Uh, we've done a really good job of separating it 
those fines that we receive from our general revenue. So we as a municipality do not rely on those revenues to operate a municipality. Uh, we put into a separate reserve called the Policing and Safety Reserve. And those uh, projects that get funded out of there go to enhancing our, the policing that we have, the safety we have in, in our community. And we're actually very, very transparent with our services. A lot of the stuff that uh, was uh, recommended by the provincial government, we already do in Stony Plain. Actually, a lot of municipalities that were revisiting their uh, tra traffic enforcement came to us for advice of how we do it. Because um, nobody likes getting a ticket, but we want to be fair and transparent about it. If uh, residents let us know that our, our provider is hiding behind a tree or somewhere, then we call our town manager and he calls somebody and then our peace officer goes knock on their window and asks them to move because that's not how we do photo enforcement here. Uh, photo enforcement is just one tool. It is not the end all and be all of um, speed safety in our community. We also have RCMP out there. We also have the peace officers. That being said, it's also non-discriminate. So it doesn't matter if you're a lawyer, a mayor, or a resident, if you're speeding over the tolerance, you get a ticket, regardless of who you are. So there's no way of talking yourself out of a ticket. So sometimes I just think that it's as a voluntary tax, right? You're in the car by yourself, you control your foot of how fast you're going. Yes, it may be a hardship for people that get tickets time after time, but that's on them, it's not on the, on the municipality. But it is good that I'm glad to see those changes are coming so that uh, municipalities that do use it as a uh, revenue generator to support their, their community, I'm glad that it's going to be a little bit fair for everybody else. Well, some people in the room may be aware that provincial legislation prohibits rural municipalities from uh, using photo radar. Um, so we talk about discrimination against <laughs> parties. Uh, rural municipalities are, are discriminated against. So if there's one change, I guess, that I would propose is um, cost sharing. Um, <laughs> Parkland County would like to see some of the revenues because a lot of our residents are getting those tickets. It's all about the cash, about the cash. Um, the city of Spruce Grove has photo radar in our community. I don't know if you knew that or not. But uh, I can tell you that the, the city of Spruce Grove welcomed the, the government report on, uh, on photo radar. And I can say, and I do, I, I can say, uh, Councillor Roth uh, is the only one that's still on council with me when this was implemented and it was done for safety. People will always call it the cash cow because it does generate a tremendous amount of revenue for the city. Um, one of the things that you may not know, but the city of Spruce Grove has been, has the lowest accident frequency of any city in Canada for the last three years. We've either been, for two years we were the lowest accident frequency, this year we're second. But uh, we, we don't have a lot of accidents in Spruce Grove. I know we blame it on the lights. The lights make you slow down and everything else, but um, you know, photo uh, enforcement has, has worked in the community. Um, Spruce Grove, uh, we have had a very close review of the findings of the provincial government. The city of Spruce Grove met all of the elements of the review findings in how we operate our system. We're not doing anything outside of the findings. And, um, but some of the elements of the program that need to be changed align with what we're looking at doing in the city. And I'm happy to say our city council is committed to having a very close review of our automated traffic enforcement program, and that conversation takes place on March 18th. So we're looking at working together, working together on and determining what that's going to look like. But I can tell you there will very likely be some changes coming to the way Spruce Grove handles our automated enforcement. Okay? Thank you. Well, I realize just as we're talking on that, maybe it might be helpful in case people don't know, because I've had people ask me before, how does the revenue side of that work? How much of that revenue 
do the municipalities take in? Maybe you could just explain for people how exactly that works. Well, there's a cost sharing, of course, with the uh, Alberta government and the service provider and the city of Spruce Grove. And so uh, the city of Spruce Grove, I believe we get around 40% of the revenue generated and the rest goes to our service provider and also to the uh, sheriff's government with the government of Alberta. 2019 is going to be a big year for Alberta. Not only do we have a provincial election happening in the next couple months, we will also elect a new federal government in October. What things do we need to see from our future provincial and federal representatives that will make the biggest impact at the municipal level? We need money. <laughs> Actually, um if many of you follow the, the news, uh, the Municipal Sustainability Grant uh, ends in uh, 2021, is that right? 2022? Yeah. So that's uh, a grant that was initiated by uh, Premier Stelmack back to assist municipalities to address infrastructure deficits and to help build their communities. Uh, that ends here without any uh, definable and secure funding for municipalities, it'll be very, very hard for us to continue the work that we're doing in our infrastructure projects and in developing our communities. Um, currently, right now, the cities of um, Edmonton and the city of Calgary has worked out a deal with the, the province to get some kind of revenue share deal. Uh, we need that as well. So if you see your elected officials come out to your door, uh, that would be a great help to municipalities is to have some kind of a revenue shield, uh, share deal that uh, we can budget within that, because not knowing how much money or how much grant dollars you can get uh, puts a hamper on the way we, that we can budget and the stuff that and service that we can do. In terms of the federal level, uh, we need a more of a bilateral agreement with the federal government. Uh, a lot of the uh, initiatives that are put forward by the federal government is run through the provincial government. And when it comes down to the provincial government, the criteria that was set up by the federal government has changed, even though the dollars are the same. So I would like to see a uh, bilateral agreement with the uh, federal government and municipalities so that when they do announce funding, we can apply directly to them uh, to fit their criteria to get the funding that we need. Every municipality talks about the need for having uh, stable, predictable funding, and uh, certainly that's the case for every municipality in uh, the province. Uh, but I think what we also need from both levels of gov government is more extensive and more meaningful consultation uh, with municipalities uh, so we can uh, better inform and subsequently receive adequate funding uh, for introduction of whether it's new legislation, uh, regulations or policies that affect municipalities. There's, uh, historically, there's been continued downloading by both levels of government, and municipalities bear that cost, uh, and that's not acceptable. And there's numerous examples um, from, you know, additional reporting requirements for, for uh, our financial uh, departments, uh, uh, the requirement for monitoring, uh, assessing uh, contaminated sites, uh, increased uh, reporting requirements to Solicitor General's department. All of these initiatives and policies require uh, municipalities to hire additional staff. And it comes at a cost. And we do not receive any money from that. Uh, I'd like to see municipalities re uh, recognizing a fair share of the cannabis excise tax. There's been no discussion on that. I think perhaps the City of Edmonton and, and uh, the City of Calgary may have an agreement. Um, you know, the City Charter is um, the details of that are not made common or made public to other municipalities. And, and as Mayor Choi said, uh, all municipalities need to be uh, treated equally and fairly. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Rod. I totally agree with everything you said about the federal government downloading and such. But just to echo a little bit about Mayor Choi's comments, uh, municipalities, the city of Spruce Grove, Stony Plain, Parkland County, and everybody... What we talk about is getting long-term sustainable funding so that we know that we can plan for uh, long-term capital plans. We're required to uh, have long-term capital plans to look at how we're building our city. 
MSI, which is called Municipal Sustainable Initiative, is provided to municipalities from the province. It's around $200 per capita per year. So for a city of Spruce Grove with just almost 36,000 people, it's about $7.2 million a year that we get from the province. And over the next three years, they've committed to giving us another $21 million. So what's going to happen when that time frame runs out in 21-22? So this is one of the things that we've been long been advocating for, is to have that long-term sustainable funding. And uh, I think that's one of the key things that we're working on. And uh, it sets up the stage for us to build all these things that we need to build for our communities. Thank you. One more question uh, left here, and we're coming up to time, so we'll get to it, and it is this one. This year, the city of Spruce Grove is taking steps towards offering local transit service uh, within Spruce Grove. They'll let just about anybody drive the bus, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> we're also seeing organizations such as the Parkland Food Bank uh, get its own program with a bus that brings users from throughout the city into its doors on Saturdays now. Having a local unified transit service has been talked about for a while. How do we make progress on that subject this year? Well, I just wanted to go back to our video and uh, we're excited. Spruce Grove has been in the transit business in the game for about 12 years. We believe it's important. We have a integrated transit service agreement with the city of Edmonton where we apply, uh, pro so we provide direct express direct to downtown and all the post-secondary. Uh, we're providing uh, internal transit service this year. We're getting three new buses in 2019, and in, 20, in the fall of 2019, we're going to start running an internal transit service. We are excited to say that our regional partners, Stony Plain and Parkland County, are working with the city, with our general managers right now, talking about how we can integrate that service, how we can have an integrated bus service between Spruce Grove, Stony Plain, and Parkland Village and such in the area. So. We're working together with them on that. I think it's important for the whole region. And uh, I think we also have to recognize uh, collaborating with uh, private groups like Engage Church. Give them a big shout out because, you know, they've taken it upon themselves. They call it a collaboration with the city of Spruce Grove. All we had to provide to them was they can use our bus stops, but they've gone out on their own and they're providing transit service for uh, people that require assistance in our community to the Parkland Food Bank. So. Let's give them a big shout out. Thank you. Well, Parkland County is uh, partnered with, and we do have an agreement with both the city and, uh, of uh, Spruce Grove and the city of Edmonton to provide transit service uh, to the Atchison Industrial Park. And we, as uh, a municipality, we also recognize the need for uh, transit service within the park. So we do have uh, shuttle service uh, that uh, take uh, employees from the drop-off uh, stop uh, to the point point of business, um, and we've you know we're a proud partner with the city of Spruce Grove. Recognize that transit is a very important uh, service that's required for municipalities to grow to attract business. Uh, we've invested in that, um, and we've also invested in other. Uh, um, service as well, specialized transit with a number of partners, not just in the tri-region, but uh, in other areas of Parkland County as well. And uh, we're hopeful that through the discussion, and there was a, a recent uh, announcement that was made, and I think most people are probably aware, uh, the 13 members of the Edmonton Metropolitan Region Board did sign a memorandum of agreement, and we're now embarking on a process to provide seamless transit service throughout the region. Um, and hopefully that will serve the, the uh, residents of every municipality um, and also will benefit businesses who uh, may need uh, transit service to get their employees uh, uh, t so they can remain viable and competitive. So the good thing about working with uh, the three municipalities is that we do have uh, an adopted uh, tri-regional transit study that we did, uh, we all threw money into to adopt. So the Town of Stonian Plain has, in our corporate plan, uh, earmarked to purchase two buses in 2020, and that's when our system starts. Um, if you've had a chance to look through the, uh, the study, because uh, we do a lot of studies in town, because we want to make sure that uh, the things that we're putting money into is well warranted and gets the best bang for the dollar. So two buses within Town of Stonian Plain by 2020. The initial conversation is that uh, 
we're going to let uh, Spruce Grove run it because they already have a uh, transit system that they're working. So it's better to do that than, again, talking about saving money and synergies instead of us setting up our own commission to, to do that. So we'll look forward to those conversations and uh, the continued uh, expansion of the transit system within the uh, tri municipal area. Maybe just one follow-up to that, because I know uh, on the Spruce Grove side, there has been discussion just about the usage increasing on buses and attributing part of that to the fact that people uh, in Stony Plain are driving to Spruce Grove and taking advantage of that. Uh, is adding buses like that, do you think that is uh, going to be sufficient in helping to uh, contribute to the Spruce Grove system? No, actually add more pressure into the commuter system. So. In the transit uh, plan, it also um, says that we actually give Spruce Grove money for that. And it is in our corporate plan, so if it survives, then Spruce Grove will be getting some money from Stony Plain for their community system. And then we'll be working on the transit system together, like the local, regional one. So, good thing that we have studies, eh? <laughs> we are? <laughs> we are. So obviously you haven't read the, uh, the report yet. <laughs> no. So... If, if people are really, really um, up to it, you can definitely read the corporate plans, but there is roughly about $750,000 going to transit in 2020 if it, if it survives the corporate plan for this year. And two of it uh, goes to buying two buses and then money to operate and also money to uh, Spruce Grove's transit uh, commuter system. Well, that's all from me tonight. Uh, I just want to give a big thanks uh, to our three mayors for coming up here and uh, addressing uh, these issues that are so important to us. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to um, thank the mayors again for um, indulging us this evening and uh, presenting not only on what has gone on, and especially in the year of 2018, but also what we can expect as a region for the future. Um, on behalf of uh, myself and um, Dave Grobman, Chair of the Spruce Grove District Chamber of Commerce, we'd like to thank all of you for coming. And I would like to thank all of our sponsors again um, for allowing this evening to be possible. They are Thompson Construction Group, Transelta, Brever Book, uh, Brook, Pioneer Limited, I need to talk to whoever um, thought that name up, Broker Link, Panda Rose, Consul Panda Rose Consulting, Decker Properties Group, Inc., Sorrentino's, Solari Distributors Canada, Victor Moro's Royal LePage Noralta, Avila Properties, Parkland County, the City of Spruce Grove, and the Town of Stony Plain. On behalf of all of us from the cha in Chamberland, as we like to call it, thank you very much for coming, and have a great